for those that don't know me, uh, my name is Sergeant uh, Glenn Fifield. I'm the public information officer here at the Low Post. And on behalf of uh, our District Lieutenant Terry Ghost, uh, Lab Manager Don Powers, welcome to our ceremony. Thank you for taking time out of each of your busy schedules. I know uh, everybody's busy and have other things that are important, but we appreciate you uh, taking time to be with us today. We couldn't have asked for a better weather day. I was telling the superintendent that uh, I've taken crash reports in, on October 24th in snow. So uh, this is phenomenal weather. Uh, thank you, Major Williams, for uh, ordering this up. This is fantastic. <laughs> so as you will see shortly, this, the capabilities in this facility will provide, uh, and it should be exciting to all of our law enforcement partners that are here today, as I know your departments rely heavily on this laboratory and the personnel that staff it. So uh, before I introduce Superintendent Carter, I'd like to invite Chaplain Darren Washington for an invocation. Chaplain. Join me in an attitude of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this opportunity for the dedication of this new building. We thank you for giving us the opportunity for technology and the ability to help our officers as they are on the highways, providing protection for all Indiana Hoosiers. We thank you for this opportunity. We ask that you continue to bless this building, bless the people who are here today. Speak with power and anointing through your speakers today. We thank you for the coverage that you give us. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain, ladies and gentlemen. Superintendent Doug Carter. Superintendent. Thank you, everybody. And as Glenn said, it's a it's a great day. I, I I'm standing back here. I've got to pinch myself almost every day to realize I get to do what I get to do. And um, I have a vague memory as a young as a young boy in 1977 coming with my father to this very post in Cherryville and Dunes Park merged together. And um, Gosh, who'd ever thought some knucklehead like me would get to stand here in front of you today? I think what I love the most is looking out and seeing all of the different facets of the criminal justice system here. The chiefs and the sheriffs, the prosecutors that are here, the support staff, other members of agencies from all across Northwestern Indiana is a really big deal. And uh, I just could not, I could not be more proud. The guy behind me, He's going to talk in just a couple minutes. Governor Eric Holcomb has allowed me to continue to do what I do. But i got to tell you that um, when people say, you know, what a legacy, it's not my legacy, it's our legacy. And our legacy gets to be experienced because a guy by the name of Eric Holcomb has supported public safety more than any governor in our history. And I am so very proud of that. And not because of the beauty of the building, but what actually occurs inside. It's unbelievable to me the number of people that we have that care more about someone else than themselves and that's ever present in this laboratory both on the first floor and on the second floor and it's not lost on me that they that, that they work behind the scenes and touch almost every violent crime that happens in, in, in many many counties statewide with the rest of our laboratory system so i hope you'll accept my sincerest thanks and appreciation um, to do the most important work behind the scenes I see, I see Brian Renner out here. Um, I still remember some early conversations with Brian Renner from the Department of Administration, Rebecca, Dr. Paul Warda here. Um, and I still remember conversations early on with the, 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 the notion that we needed to build a new laboratory network. And um, <laughs> gosh, here we are. I, it's, it's a dream that came true, Brian. And th those conversations early on with how are we going to pay for it, the elected officials that are here, I'm so grateful for your support over time and all that you've done for you've done for us. But this matters to everybody, not to any one entity. So with sincere thanks, sincere gratitude, and absolute respect for, for each of you and for our system, I, I just say thank you very much. The State Police Board members, um, it's nice to see you. Dave Graves is from Sellersburg, Indiana, and he left on Saturday to get here. <laughs> but I'm glad you I'm glad you made the I'm glad you made the trip. Uh, the, uh, Dawn Powers, Derek Scott, um, Terry Ghost, Jerry Williams, Mike Wiley, Mickey James, our CFO, the list goes on and on and on. None of this happens without that big group effort. So I am most grateful. Thank you all so very much. And I look forward to interacting with you here very soon.
Okay, our next speaker will be the uh, laboratory commander, Major Sid Newton, sir. Again, I would like to thank uh, Governor Holcomb, our legislators, Superintendent Carter, the Department of Administration for their support to construct the state-of-the-art laboratory facility. Uh, this facility will allow the laboratory to expand staff and technologies that have served the criminal justice community of Northwest Indiana for several decades. This facility will offer efficiencies and the capacity to improve our turnaround time on laboratory examinations. Uh, the, the work the laboratory stuff, staff does is critical in aiding law enforcement with investigations. So during the tour, uh, you'll have the opportunity to speak with our laboratory staff and learn about their specific laboratory disciplines. Again, I would like to thank everyone for their support to see this vision to become a reality. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Assistant Chief of Staff, Logistics Major, Jerry Williams. Major. I promise I will be very brief, only because I'll be repeating everything that the superintendent has already said. This, this is the reason why this is so big, and, that, and we talked about the dynamics of Northwest Indiana and the contributions that have been made here over the last 10 or 11 years. This process started back quite a while ago, and to have the support of all of the legislators, the governor, uh, who is uh, coming up next to speak, is uh, we cannot put that into words. He spoke about individuals that behind the scenes that really navigate these processes. Deputy Commissioner uh, Brian Renner is one of those key individuals supported by his commissioner to be able to help us bring this to fruition. To all of our partners, um, the opportunity here for us to, to uh, add to our public safety platform, to add to our crime fighting uh, abilities here, is a really big deal. This this this, uh, this building here will support 14 plus counties, uh, and that is a really big deal. And all of the municipalities within it, uh, and for that we are we are totally grateful for it. Uh, this is a great opportunity for all of us to be able to expand our opportunities, to be able to get rid of some backlog uh, casework, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you name it. This brings about that opportunity. So this, in my opinion, is your facility. This is. This is the governor, this is your state representatives and legislators bringing an investment back to uh, Northwest Indiana that will be seen for many years into the future. And I tell you what, we cannot understate, understate that at all. So again, I thank you and I won't uh, hold this mic because the really important guy is standing behind me about to walk up here. And finally, most important speaker, Governor Holcomb, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, I'm smiling ear to ear for the same reasons I think many of you are. We have, I want to just kind of put this into context, maybe bring this picture of what we're celebrating today uh, into focus and talk a little bit about where we came from and where we are, and most importantly, as the superintendent just said, where we're gonna be in two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years because of this facility. And there's a lot of people to thank, obviously, and you've, you've heard some of those selected, but it really, if you rewind the tape just a little bit more, the reason we're in this position is because our economy is growing and we're able to, we have the financial wherewithal and we have courageous legislators who are willing to step up and be persuasive about addressing the needs of our, most importantly, our people and our places that make this such an incredible state to live in and work in and play in and retire in. So without that kind of backdrop, we don't, we don't get to days like today. And I remember a very early discussion with Superintendent Carter, and I think this was seven years ago probably by now, at least. 
And I, I said, the bottom line is, what do you need? Which is common in life. Not what you want, but what, what is it that you need? And as you can imagine, the superintendent was very detailed in all the needs that had been piling up. And I almost regretted asking that question because it was somewhat of a long list. But I, I got to tell you, we've been checking every single one of those boxes, maybe culminating today, but we've got more work to do. This is such a big deal because of the way it brings us together in a form of a real community. And the lack of a community really is something that threatens us all. But to see the, as you mentioned, the prosecutors and the coroners and the state police and on and on and on working together on a project like this that not too long ago, 1986, we testing DNA, we weren't doing it prior to that. And now it's in the field instant. And now there's the backlogs are getting erased. But when you think about this being a project, this superintendent and I were in another county, Hamilton County, just outside of Noblesville, Indiana. And we were celebrating, like today, uh, the beginning the construction of a new armory and many of our armories were actually built in the 30s and yes times have changed a bit and the way we recruit like we do for the state police is a little different the way we recruit men and women in uniform that serve in the military and so having new armories all over the state of Indiana just last week I was over at Potato Creek State Park. The last lodge that the state of Indiana built was in 1939. The last new lodge. 1939, that's when FDR was in office. When you think about those armories in the 30s, that's when Hoover was in office, when we were building those armories. We're, we're adding lanes, and some of you maybe got delayed a little bit coming up 65 if you were coming up from the capital city direction of Sellersburg. That, you know, we're doing major highway interstate projects that have been sitting on shelves, gathering dust, blueprints, wish lists, to-do lists that we were never able to get to since the 50s, since Eisenhower was in office. And so when you start to add all these up, the South Shore Line, a century ago, we're now finally adding a double track to the South Shore Line. Think about 1923, single track. That's when Coolidge was in office. Think about the Westville Correctional Facility that is replacing two woefully out-of-date facilities. That was first built the Michigan City Prison in 1860, before Lincoln was sworn in. This is Buchanan's administration. To put all this in perspective about all the work that we're doing, because I think now more than ever we're aligned in our purpose. And to see the local communities, to see the partnerships form up. and to see everyone rally around, whether it's, that helicopter was on that list, right? These labs, these posts, paying the men and women in uniform, not what just they've earned, but what they deserve. Finally, we're at a day to where we are expressing as a state what our true priorities are. And I think that's why our state is growing, despite, despite some neighboring states outcomes and so these investments in our people and our places by the way pay for with cash not debt financed this is this is distinguishing and this is what makes me smile ear to ear 
and proud to be a Hoosier. Thank you to every single person that had a hand in getting us to this day. Thank you so much. Okay, with that, we're going to go ahead and line up for the ribbon cutting event. Okay, as they leave, they're going to enter the building. I'm going to, I have a job to do here. So uh, the building you see behind me is replacing our old post. Uh, the old post is not going anywhere. That was built in 1977. And uh, that's going to be used for cold storage for the laboratory, as well as some other offices are going to remain in there for some of the detec detectives and investigators. Uh, the building that we're leaving was 8,000 square feet. The one behind me is 40,000 square feet, so that gives us about 48,000 square feet to uh, play with. The uh, garage will remain where it's at. Uh, the new post, this is going to be home to three areas. We have the laboratory, we've got the regional dispatch center, which you'll see, and it'll be home to obviously our district troopers and investigators. The cost of this new building was approximately $30 million. And it took just, uh, just about two years to construct. We had a couple of delays with uh, materials and uh, Pepper Construction had, did a phenomenal job uh, organizing this construction project, but the delays were obviously from the COVID pandemic and getting that, that stuff in here. ISP board, welcome. Be a first enter. So once they get in and get going, we'll just file in an organized fashion right through the front door. So welcome and enjoy our post. Thank you for coming.